Tip at Crafty Hope and welcome. I am starting to work on the September four core challenge from Ina Salisbury. I'll put a link below. Ina revealed at the beginning of September what this month's challenge was when she revealed her August make. So this is a 2D or 3D mixed media challenge and it's called four core because you have to use four core ingredients that Ina sets out. So this month she has asked that we use a focal point of an eye, some kind of script or writing within the piece, a cluster or design of diamonds or like diamond shapes. Um, I'm thinking like a harlequin design would be neat. I think that's kind of what she shared but you could do diamonds in any way you want and then some kind of ombre within it. So I've got a pretty solid idea that um and before I really get any more involved because I've done a couple little things and I'm like, let me get the camera on and share what I've got. And that way I can pop the camera on as I add other things. So for the focal point of an eye, um, I kind of knew I was going to use maybe some magazine eyes or magazine eye because I for years I've cut, cut out eyes out of magazines and I just have them in a folder across the room. So I yeah, I'm going to do that. And I really kind of wanted, when I saw this in my head, I saw it like peeping through something kind of deep and I kind of wanted to use one of these big rusty washers so I thought that over an eye would be super cool. And then it hit me that this medicine cap could be my like container. So I've got that. I've... I did like a trial run with this eye from a magazine that I stuck on just some craft paper cardstock. Um, but I think it kind of works. I'm going to put it in here, but I don't like it too deep all the way in. I found that that pushes it too far back. So I'm going to put something in it, um, maybe some paper, maybe some wood, something to kind of keep it forward um, so that it's kind of a little more forward and then like that. I don't know. So something along those lines. I'm also going to do it in this box. I think this is just a little tray, crate, whatever you want to call it from the Dollar Tree. I got this with the stars on it. I don't really like the stars. So I took a, oh, I don't even know what it is. They're squares from the Dollar Tree of a similar kind of wood. And my husband helped me cut those down. So I'm going to put them basically in here I'm going to glue them with some wood glue once I find my wood glue um, and glue those in here to cover up the stars and then I'm going to like texturize it fill them in somehow up here but I also want to alter this medicine bottle cap so I'm going to paint it in just a few minutes with uh, black gesso but we'll get to all that and like I said I the first thing I did was sanded down my elements. Those uh, pieces my husband cut, I made sure they were sanded on all sides. The box I also sanded. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know that there's a lot of this I clipped down really short because this video had a lot of little elements that were repetitive, um, and I really didn't anticipate this video being so long. But it is what it is. I had so many ambitions for this, so. Once I get all that sanded, I fit the those rectangles of wood into the box, kind of deciding which way they were going to go and all of that and mark them so I would know which way I had decided that they would go. And I did that just with a pencil and I made sure I did it on the inside that I was going to be covering up, like what was going to be touching the box. So you can see I'm doing that here. I guess I could have cut this down a little bit, but I wanted to explain what was going on with this video a little bit and apologize for the length. So once I got all of it sanded and fitted the way I wanted, I did grab that little square that was the excess piece of from the um, the wood that my husband cut and I'm just using a craft knife there y'all to cut it down so that it will fit inside that pill bottle top. So I'm going to do two of them and stack them and when I have my wood glue out I'll be gluing them together because I don't think I show me gluing those together on camera. But I wanted you to see that I just you know some of this wood stuff can you don't have to go break out the bandsaw like I did. <laughs> you can use um, a craft knife to get it all done. So I, I can't believe I'm showing all of this. Okay so that's going to go in there and my eye will go on top 
just like that. I'm super excited about that. It was it fit beautifully. So I'm going to clean my desk real quick and go ahead and break out the wood glue. Um, I also have some clamps. I the, the clamps were overkill. My husband gave those to me when he realized what I was doing. But I'm just using some wood glue from the Dollar Tree. Y'all, I marked where my star was on there because I thought, oh, I don't want to get the wood glue in there. It doesn't matter because I'm going to fill it in in a minute anyway. It hits me there in a second when I'm spreading the glue. So, um, like I was saying, I don't actually need those overkill clamps. I was just going to use some binder clips, like paper binder clips, and those probably would have worked fine. But my husband does do woodworking, and so he has all of these things that he's like, oh, yeah, we'll do this. Use this thing. And, yeah, even that glue spreader is a special thing he bought for me because he was like, you can use this with wood. So, what I did with the wood at the top, I'm going to do on both sides. Um, I'm only going to show you one side. So while that wood glue was drying, I went ahead and painted my pill bottle with just some black gesso. This basically is just like a primer. And I knew that was going to glue the back of this. So I'm not super concerned with getting the back too much. But I did do about two coats of that gesso on there. All right, so now we're going to get to my filler here, and I am filling this with, y'all will end up replacing this. I believe this was some joint compound and gesso and plaster paris, and it's just a text, homemade like texture paste, and that's what I'm filling in the ends here, but do you see how little I have? I'm going to make some more and a little bit for another portion of this but that part was just to fill in those stars so that those weren't so obvious and then I just use E6000 to glue my little stack of wood in my pill bottle and I'm gonna put a little weight on it I picked this little iron up it's a little cast iron iron that works great as a little weight all right, so both of those stars are clear. I have mixed up some more texture paste. This is light spackle from the Dollar Tree gesso and some plaster Paris mix. So that's all that is. And I've got this Harlequin stencil from Tim Holtz that I am using. And I am using that same palette knife to push that texture paste, that homemade texture paste through this stencil. And I'm going to show you, I do do all four sides, but I just did two at a time. So I'll do two here and then let it dry and do the other two because it worked easier for me to put the that little box down on my table so that it was facing up like that to do this. And I didn't want to have wet um, texture paste and smush it and all that. So, and this was really easy. And because I wanted it to have kind of a distressed textured feel, I don't have to be super exact with this, especially since I know that there's more texture paste on those two, like the top and bottom portions. Uh, it, it's going to be very rustic. So none of my stenciling here has to be super exact. So, and it was really good. The texture paste, when I put it down, kind of stuck the stencil in place. So, pulled that up. I'm using the side of the stencil to scrape the excess off. And while all that was drying, I came in with some. This is a rust paste set from Finnebear. It's Prima Marketing. And I'm going to use it along with something else to do this rust. Now, I, I start with the dark bleh, brown. Bleh. It is the most textured, and I'm going around it. It has dried up a little. Uh, later on, I ended adding a little bit of water to it, just a tiny, tiny bit, and it helped a lot to, to get that to be uh, more malleable. So I'm just putting the brown down first, getting it on there. I'm, it is very textured. It's like got a sand almost texture to it to give it that super grungy texture of, of rust. So I put the brown down and then there is like an orangey, I guess I'm going to put a little bit more down, trying to, and in the process of this, I do peel up some of my gesso. That bottle cap was kind of rubbery, so the gesso is not really sticking to it real great, but this is just while I'm handling it. I'll fix it later um, toward the end of this. I, I don't even think I put it on camera because I think I just added like little touches of more gesso to it. So the second one is a like an, a bright orangey color, which really is the color of rust. And again, I'm just putting that on there sporadically, dabbing it, 
whatever, getting it all over there. As you can see, it's and it's a little bit, it's less solid than that brown one. So these kind of uh, change in consistency, like that brown one's super thick, and then the orange one's medium thick, and then this yellow is thinner. And you don't need very much of the yellow when you use it, because if you'll look, you can see my little washer up there. It doesn't have much yellow in there, it's just kind of hints of it. So I'm just putting a little bit of that yellow on there. And when I got done with that, I wasn't super happy with not with just my technique of using it. I felt like it needed a little something else. So I grabbed, I have a, oh, I can't, what brand is it? I'll show it to you. I think it's Waverly. It's just from, um, I, I, like I said, I think it's Waverly. It's a chalk paint called Pumpkin. And I am going to put bits of it around on top of all of this. And y'all will see, and right there, I wasn't super happy with it. But when I get done with this, I am so happy because the chalk paint is kind of a matte finish. And it, it worked really beautifully on here to, to really help that that rust feel of all of this. The color was just right. I don't know. It, I, it matched that washer really well. It may not match all rust, but I was going for a match on that washer. So... I get that done. I'm going to let it dry. And y'all can see I was just working with this on top of that's just a little jar of charcoal just to make it easier to hold that. All right. Now I'm coming back to my box. All four sides of this are dry. I've got some, I think it's folk art, antiquing wax. And I've used this before in some of my assemblages on the boxes, but this time I'm using it on the box with the texture paste. And all this is, is I am painting this on here and then I'm going to kind of blot it off with a paper towel. Super simple. It, it enhances the wood, makes it feel more like it's stained. And I don't know, it just felt more finished to me. So I'm going to blot that off and you can see that, that it doesn't take away any of that pattern. So that was perfect. Once that was dry, I'm going to start altering this a little bit to accent it. And I began with some just black acrylic paint, um, kind of dry brushing this on as lightly as I can, just to kind of darken the wood, give it more age, and to pick up a little bit of that, that texture somewhat, because I'm going to add some metallics on the top, and I want them to show, and I knew that they would work out really well on top of like a black, but I didn't want this to be black black, and that's why I started with the paint and just, I mean, started with the antiquing wax and am just accenting it with the paint. Like I said, this was really beautiful because it gave it that like old kind of look to it. At least to me, it does. I, again, I did all four sides of that and I am coming in. This is a new product from Tim Holtz called Foundry Wax. And it comes, it's, you'll have to watch his video on it, but it comes out as a liquid and you put it on. Um, I think probably supposed to do with a brush, but I really like using my finger. And then once it's on, you heat it with a heat gun and it makes that metallic wax kind of melt and really pop. So once I get that on there, I'm going to move my bottle of foundry wax away because I don't want to heat it and have that go solid on me. <laughs> So I heated that and y'all look how much that pops. Now I wanted it just a little more pop. I found that this was the best thing was to do the combo of these two. And this is the Art Metallic Wax from Finnebear. Again, that's a Prima Marketing. And it is a solid wax instead of that like liquidy wax that the foundry wax is. And like the two of these in combination really got the effect I wanted. So yeah. I like to play with all of my materials. So um, the color of that foundry wax was statue too. All right, before I went any further, I decided to go ahead and get kind of an idea of what the back of my box was going to be because I knew I was going to need that in a bit. So I'm going ahead and just marking the inside of the box and I'll cut that down with scissors and we'll get back to that in a minute. So now I'm going to paint my box and I'm using a combination of some paint scrape acrylic paint and I believe it's Liquitex gold medium and I'm mixing that. 
um, because I wanted it to have, since I put that, those waxes on the outside that have that kind of golden sparkle, well not shine, sparkle, more of a shine, I wanted to have some of that gold on the inside of my box as well, since, um, especially since I was going to be using some of those rusty pieces in there. So I mix that up and I'm just going to take a big paintbrush and do all the inside surfaces. Now I think here you can also see that I got the, the front edges of my box have that antiquing wax on it. And while I'm painting this Payne's Gray Gold mixture, I'm going to let some of it get on that front as well so that the two kind of blend a little bit. It's not in every spot. It's just in a few. It is intentional. So <laughs> so I did the inside and then I, and more importantly for me was the sides because I knew I was going to cover the back, but I wanted that to be a consistent color on it. So the edges are really what I was wanting to have this, this Payne's Gray gold paint on. So I'm going to do all of that. I did take some dowels and cut them down. My husband let me use the bandsaw that time. He showed me what to do and I cut them down to three of the same size and I am, and then I did the whole black gesso and then rust technique on it on them. So I didn't show that again because it was the exact same thing I did on the pill bottle. And I am going a, a, like a pyramid of the three of them together. I don't like the one because it felt too much like a popsicle <laughs> when I put that eye on the top. So and there I'm trying to just level the bottom to make sure they all are level on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and use my E6000 there to glue my eyeball into my cap. I had a certain part I wanted to make sure was the bottom. So I turned that around and then I'm going to, on the edge of that pill bottle top, I'm going to put the E6000 and then put my washer right on top. And I'm going to leave all of those things to dry. So... You'll see this. Everything was just, like I said, there were a lot of little pieces to this, and it was all about coming back and doing it. So once those are dry, I'm going to tack on this, um, the, use the E6000 on the top of my dowels and stick it on there. This doesn't stay really well because those weren't as level at the top as they were at the bottom, and the, the shape of the pill bottle top isn't even, and uh, it was just a thing. So now I'm going to work on my background, and this includes my writing and my ombre for the challenge. You saw I did the diamonds and the eye already. So I've got a round um, Jelly Arts gel plate that I am putting some Distress Oxide in Rusty Hinge, and I'm going to put that um, toward the top of this, but not all the way at the top. I kind of had an idea of where I wanted it so I could put my washer, I mean, yeah, my eyeball thing in the middle. And I'm going to peel that up and I'm going to clean it, my jelly plate off a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to take Distress Oxide and Peacock Feathers and go around that circle like so. And then I've got blue pen, bleh, Blueprint Sketch. I think I have trouble with that one every time. And I'm going to go around the Peacock Feathers a little bit just like that. And then I'm going to take a really wet paintbrush and activate all this, starting in the middle and working out so I can get my ombre effect. Now that piece of dictionary paper there that I used is the definition of eye is on there. There's even a diagram in that upper right you can kind of see. So that's why this is a little offset from the center because I wanted to make sure to get that diagram in my final product. So... And there's my ombre, you can see, and my writing kind of pushed there in the background, but I can still see the writing because I know it's just this distress oxide. So I'm going to dry this. While I'm drying it, there's a section there that doesn't dry, so I blot it up, but that takes away a lot of the color. So I'm going to put a little more of the blueprint sketch down, add a little more water there, and then dry it again. I was trying to make the darker blue on the outside so it would kind of blend into the Payne's Gray on the side of the box, if that makes sense. 
So I'm bringing in my instant coffee, y'all. This is just some dried up instant coffee that I thought would be fun to put in to the background here to break it up just a little bit and help with some of the like brown tones that are in the rest that I've got on everything else. So it was just kind of to make the colors a little more cohesive. So once I got my splatter down, I'm going to dry that. And I think I got it mostly dry. It's not, I don't think it's all the way that dry. And then to echo the metallics that are on the inside of that box and on the outside, I've got my Liquitex acrylic ink in gold. And I'll grab my fan brush and splatter some more. So, yeah, that way we've got, kind of, again, it, it just helps make everything a little more cohesive. So, and I really love these little accents from the box. It really gives something else to the box. So I'm going to dry that and I think I put it, do I put it aside? Yeah, I'm going to let y'all see those sparkles. I love it. So I decided since I did the splatter on the paper there for, that's going to go in the background that it would be really cool to continue it in the box. So I'm just going to splatter it on the edges of the box and dry that. And y'all, it looks like stars. It's, I don't know, it's really gorgeous when it, look at that. I love it so much. So. I've got that all done. I'm going to grab my dried paper again and um, I grab my template and I will mark and it had a preliminary mark on it but I'm going to go back so I can see it a little bit better and mark and then cut that out. I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing. You know how cutting things out works. <laughs> so I'll cut that out but the big thing I wanted to do was um, I'm marking here where my eyeball part is because I want to cut out some of the paper. I do not want to glue that eyeball as heavy as it is to the paper. I want to glue it to the box because that paper can easily rip from the box. So I cut, you so saw I used a little paper punch to make a little hole. Um, I'm marking again where part of the back is and I'm going to cut a larger hole there again this is will not be seen but I want to glue that bottle top to the box and not to the paper <laughs> I don't mind if I glued the dowels but that washer was super heavy and I know that it could pull from that box and it would just rip the paper so that was the idea with that so I'm using Mod Podge here. Um, I put entirely too much inside of my box here, but that's okay. It'll be fine. I'll, I end up wiping some out with a paper towel in a little bit. But here I'm putting my backer in. I'm going to grab just like a key card to scrape it down, get some of the wrinkles out, make sure everything is fitted up in the edges. And I use my hand as well. So once that is good and dry, I do grab my E6000 again. I'm putting it in that hole that I made in that backer. And then down on my the back of my dowels, the bottom of my dowels, and the back of my eyeball. So that everything is there. And then I drop it in. And I'm going to adjust it just quickly to make sure everything is. And I leave it to dry. Now y'all, for a fun little element, I took a couple of pla black plastic forks and cut the tines off. And I'm going to make eyelashes with them. It's also kind of a sunburst effect, which was my initial idea. But when I started playing with that idea, it turned into eyelashes. So I started by, and I'm just using my E6000 and I'm gluing those to that paper back and then also to the, the pill bottle top. And I tried to use the tweezers, but my fingers worked way better. So I'm only going to show you a couple of these. I start because I had some, the outer tines of these plastic forks I used were bigger than the inner tines. So I'm taking three of those bigger ones and putting them on there. And then I'm going to fill in. So I'm putting three of those and then four of the little ones, if that makes sense. 
but I'm gluing this in you. I'm going to show y'all here in just a second when I place the last one down and then you're going to get a look at this. I encourage you to use the hashtag for Cora to see anybody else that's playing along. Make sure to go check out Ina and what she does. She'll probably be revealing hers at the beginning of September and announcing the October challenge. So I absolutely love what I made here. If you've stuck in this whole video with me, I appreciate it. I'm going to give you a whole load of pictures to watch, to look at here. Let me know if you have any questions. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching y'all. Bye.